You've probably heard of the query store and you've probably used it for SQL Server and Azure SQL, but maybe you haven't, or maybe you wanna learn more and learn how it's changed from SQL Server 2016 all the way through the new things shipping in SQL Server 2022. Learn all about it this week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, I'm joined by Kendall Van Dyke, a PM on the SQL team. Uh, before we get into the content, Kendall, can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Sure. Hi, Anna. Thanks for having me on the show. Um, I've been working with SQL Server for over 20 years now. I've been a developer. I've been a DBA. I've been a consultant. I was an MVP for a few years, and uh, when I joined Microsoft, actually worked with customers hands-on. I would go and visit customers, help them with architecture and performance tuning, um, all things SQL Server related. And then two years ago, I joined the SQL Server team. I helped run the SQL 2022 early adoption program. And now I'm working on the intelligent query processing team and helping to make new features that you'll see eventually. Awesome, cool. Well, you seem to be like the exact right person to bring on the show to talk about something that a lot of people have probably heard about, maybe some people haven't, but either way, I think we're all gonna learn something uh, from you today, and that is the query store. So let's just go ahead and get started with the basics. Like what is the query store and why should people use it? Sure thing. So performance tuning is my bread and butter. And before SQL 2016, we had to rely on things like dynamic management views and perfmon counters. Um, maybe you had some third-party monitoring tools installed, but none of those things were a perfect way to really understand what's going on with your SQL Server. So in SQL 2016, we introduced Query Store. Now this is often referred to as a flight data recorder for queries. And the idea behind Query Store is that we're gonna capture query text, execution plans, and runtime statistics on a per database basis and we're going to do it in a way that has a negligible impact on your performance. We're going to cache some things in memory and then periodically flush those to disk and then expose those via some system tables and some reports inside of Management Studio that you can then go and view in order to figure out what's going on inside of your database. It really simplifies your performance tuning efforts and makes it easy to understand what's happening. Um, Query Store is available for SQL Server 2016 and later. It actually came out in Azure SQL and SQL 2016 around the same time as each other. It's also available in Azure SQL Database, in SQL Managed Instance, and in Synapse Analytics for dedicated SQL pools only. Now, most people think of Query Store as a way just to tune performance, but it actually helps you do a lot more than that. Most people use it for looking at things like top resource consuming queries, you know, the things that are causing you pain or running long. You can also use it to figure out queries that have plan choice regressions. Oftentimes something changes in the middle of the night, stats get updated or indexes get rebuilt and all of a sudden query performance goes south and you're left wondering what happened. With Query Store, you can find those queries pretty easily. You can also leverage it for A-B testing, things like applying an index. Did the index help? You can look at your query store reports and decide the before and the after if it helped or not. It helps during upgrades. Uh, when you're upgrading SQL Server and say you're changing the compatibility level and you want to make sure that uh, your queries perform consistently and you get that stable performance out of it, uh, you can use a feature in Query sto Store called Plan Forcing that allows you to fix a plan so that you can troubleshoot and figure out what's going on with that plan if it's got some kind of a regression issue after you've done your upgrade. And then finally, you can use Query Store to help improve ad hoc workloads. If most of your workload in your database is ad hoc, it's going to show up in your top resource consuming queries as a bunch of single execution queries. And you can help look at those queries uh, with those reports and figure out what are the queries maybe we need to go look at parameterizing or turn on optimize for ad hoc workloads or turn on force parameterization or some combination thereof. Nice. This is really exciting. Of course, like when we hear something that sounds like maybe it's too good to tr be true, sometimes we think it is. So I have to ask, like, does this cost extra for a SQL server or Azure SQL? Like, what do I have to pay to get this? You don't have to pay anything. Like all features of SQL Server, it is just built right in. You just need to make sure it's enabled. And that goes for both Azure SQL and SQL Server on-premises. Got it. Okay. Is it enabled by default? 
it's not enabled by default for older versions of SQL Server. So let me give you a quick history on Query Store and get you caught up to where we're at with SQL 2022. And that'll help paint that picture of, of uh, what Query Store looks like today. That sounds great. Right, so I mentioned already that uh, what Query Store does, all of those things came along in SQL 2016. Uh, we introduced the, the V1 basically. And this was awesome. If you're a performance tuner like me, this opens up a ton of possibilities. You show up to a customer, they've got Query Store turned on and it's a gold mine of information. It's fantastic, right? It didn't quite do everything though. Uh, it was a great start. So we improved it in SQL 2017. We added some scalability improvements based off of feedback from customers. We also introduced per plan wait stats. So when you're trying to figure out if you're waiting overall on CPU or memory or disk or some other resource in SQL Server, you now can see that on a per plan basis. And then we started dipping our toe in the water of intelligent query processing with automatic plan regression detection. So that scenario I mentioned earlier where a plan goes off the rails at two o'clock in the morning and you're left wondering what happened. Well, you can come in the next morning with automatic plan regression detection enabled and find that the engine has automatically determined that there was a regression issue and forced that last known good plan. Finally, uh, we added some additional management studio reports um, in order to help surface some of those things. And then in SQL 2019, more scalability improvements based off of customer feedback. We added plan forcing for cursors. And then we also added custom capture policies. We realized that the default capture policies uh, didn't quite work for every single customer. Some customers had higher workloads or had higher uh, resource usage from query stores. So we gave you the ability to turn, tune those knobs just a little bit in order to figure out which queries would actually be captured inside a query store and which ones would not. Now for all of these previous versions to answer your question in SQL Server and like a version uh, that you'd run on premises, Query Store was turned off by default. In Azure, it's on by default. That brings us to SQL Server 2022. And I know you're dying to know what's new yeah. in Query Store in 2022, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, there is a lot in SQL Server 2022. First and most importantly, we're going to be on by default for all new databases. That means that any new database that you create will have Query Store enabled with a few changes to the capture policies. First, we change the capture mode from all to auto. That also introduces some thresholds so that um, we're not capturing every single query and just taking down your server because of the, the high volume of queries that we're trying to capture and persist in the query store. And then second, we change the max size of query store from 100 megabytes to one gigabyte. Note that this does not apply to any of your databases that you have restored or upgraded that where Query Store was off. We're retaining those Query Store settings and honoring those from wherever you brought them from. This is only for brand new databases. Nice. How about some other features? There's a lot of new stuff in 2022, right? So you've had another Data Exposed episode about this already. Um, I'd encourage everybody to go watch that where we've introduced Query Store Hints. Now we brought Query Store Hints to Azure before we brought it to SQL Server. We introduced it in SQL 2022. And the idea behind Query Store Hints in, um, in, in simple terms is that without touching the code and when you have a plan that you've actually captured in the Query Store, you can apply an additional hint to that query, maybe an optimize for unknown um, or some other kind of a hint where you can coerce the performance of that query without actually touching the code. Sometimes we can't touch application code or we can't touch it fast and, and get those changes deployed. Um, query store hints and plan forcing together combined are in a way very similar to what you might get out of something like plan guides. It's not mm -hmm. quite a direct equivalent, but we're getting very, very close to what plan guides offer by um, those two features inside of query store. So we brought query store hints to SQL 2022 now. And um, we're bringing in intelligent query processing features. I'll, I'll touch on that in just a minute, but they're going to actually use query store hints as well. And we have uh, a few new features um, in the intelligent query processing family that were introduced in 2022. But historically, one of the, the um, challenges that we've had with IQP features is that if you restart your instance or if you fail over your instance in an availability right. group to a secondary replica, you lose all of the things that you've learned. So we're actually going to integrate um, in a new section of Query Store that we call the Feedback Store, some of those IQP feedback mechanisms. So CE feedback, DOP feedback, I'll, I'll touch on those in just a minute. But 
Uh, the idea is that we're going to persist those in the query store now so that when you restart, when you fail over, um, or when you move your database to another instance, all of the things that have been learned about, uh, about your performance get retained and you can pick right back up where you left off without having to go and relearn all those mechanisms. And then the big one that we introduced uh, is query store for read replicas. We do listen to feedback. This was yeah. one of the top voted items for query store and for intelligent query processing in our Azure Ideas feedback site. People want query store and secondary replicas. The challenge with a secondary replica is that it's a read-only database. So how do you persist something in a read-only database? Well, we built a mechanism that will send information back through the communications channels for your availability group to your primary replica and then save that data in the primary replica so that you can then see uh, your query performance on your secondary replicas. You can see those reporting queries that are taking a long time to run and, and see what the plans are doing and how long they're taking, what kind of resources they're using. Uh, you can also enable the IQP features uh, that we'll talk about here on those secondary replicas. So we wanna make this IQP work across the board by persisting that information uh, in query store, both from primary and secondary replicas. Okay. Speaking of IQP, um, I'm going to steal a slide from our launch deck. You may have seen this one already, um, but it, I want to highlight what we're actually bringing into the query store uh, and how those IQP features are working. So there's a few new features, uh, IQP features that are going to leverage query store, the feedback store in particular, and that's DOP feedback, that's de degree of parallelism feedback, uh, cardinality estimation feedback, and parameter, parameter sensitive plan optimization. And in particular, DOP feedback and cardinality estimation feedback are going to leverage that feedback store. Um, hints are also stored in query store, uh, just directly in, in the query store itself. PSP optimization is stored in query store in the sense that you'll see all of the plan, uh, plan variations in query store. So you can tell if you've got, say, three different versions of a plan for a query, that's retained uh, in query store. Right? So query store plus IQP together mean that uh, we can take advantage of all of these great features and make the database run even better, even faster, even more reliably without you having to touch a thing. I think that's a fantastic feature on top of all the great things that Query Store can already do for you. For sure. And now, I, I want to go that, back to the that, last. That last part is without you having to do anything is just like the most exciting part about all the investments that we're making. Um, you know, as we start to wrap up, I'd love to understand, uh, you know, how do I know, like we know if it's default or not, but how do I know if I'm using query store for a given database? Sure. So remember it's on by default for all those new databases. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's enabled by default. Um, before I get there, I want to point out one other thing. I would be remiss if I did not do this. You probably noticed there were some asterisks on this last slide. Yes. That's because um, some of these features are not in Azure at the time that we're recording this. So uh, optimized plan forcing, query store for read replicas, and, and uh, IQP features are coming. They are going to make it to Azure. This was one of those rare cases where we actually got the feature into SQL 2022 first and now we're working on delivering it out across Azure. So we're going to have this across the board. Just be aware of that. Um, and then Query Store for Read Replicas technically is still under preview for SQL 2022. We had some last minute changes based off of feedback from our, um, from our early adoption program and from our, our previews. We wanted to make sure we get it right. So right now it's under trace flag um, and for non-production use but we are going to deliver the capability for production use and remove that requirement for a trace flag in a cumulative update uh, for SQL 2022. So if you installed SQL 2022 expecting to use Query Store for read replicas, you are going to get that feature. Awesome. Now to answer that question about is Query Store enabled, um, it's very easy to tell if Query Store is enabled. Uh, in Object Explorer, if you expand out your database uh, and you see a Query Store folder, that's one clue that Query Store is turned on or at least uh, enabled in your database. If you want to make absolutely sure that it's actually capturing queries though and, uh, and looking at performance data as queries are being executed, then you'll want to double check your database properties window. Um, and at the bottom of that window, there's a query store page and you can see that you're in read write mode um, so that uh, you're actually capturing new queries. You can also check uh, by running a query if T-SQL is your thing, 
look at sys.databases and there's a column called is query store on. It's going to be a one or a zero, one if it's on, zero if it's off. And if you happen to need to turn query store on, you can uh, either do that from the properties page um, in object uh, using Management Studio, or you can enable it with T-SQL syntax. It's very easy to turn it on. Uh, just make sure that when you do turn it on, that you double check all of your capture policies uh, and your size and your retention policies to make sure that it's right for your environment and doesn't cause any performance issues. Got it. Awesome. Kendall, thanks so much for coming on today. I learned a lot about Query Store, the history, how to use it, how to know if it's on. Um, so I really appreciate you coming on and spending the time with us. Uh, for our viewers, if you have any feedback on uh, the Query Store or anything else SQL related, um, you can head to this URL on the page. We'll also put it in the description for you to uh, go click on that and give us your feedback. Um, if you like this episode, go ahead, give it a like, leave us a comment and let us know what you think. Follow the links in the descriptions to learn all that you need to know about Query Store and give us feedback. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed.